Hey, thanks for joining in to this episode of Extreme Reloading. Here's what I've been up to. You know, I am repeating the ladder test, but this time I'm not going to be using 308 Winchester. I'm using 223 Remington or 556 NATO. And I have prepared Federal Champion Brass, and I'll tell you a little bit about the brass selection. In a previous episode of Extreme Reloading, a couple years ago now, we did a episode called Primer Palooza. And we looked at primers pretty darn closely in the 5.56. And we looked at the effect of different primers, uh, premium primers, standard primers, and all this good stuff. And uh, one of the things that came out of that uh, is the fact that a good premium primer does pay dividends and benefits when you're loading 5.56 or 2.23. And by the way, uh, I kind of say those together, but in reality there are differences, especially in the pressures that the 5.56 will achieve, much higher pressures uh, in the 5.56 than com uh, compared to the 2.23. I'm actually loading at 223 pressures, that's not really the point that I want to talk about right now. One of the other things that we learned with the Primer Palooza and the entire series actually of loading for the 223 was that your brass really does make a difference. Now that's not big news to um, precision reloaders but it might be news to those who are shooting AR-type platform rifles. And at a bare minimum, what we found is that sorting by head stamp will actually uh, give you some good performance pluses. In other words, it will reduce that standard deviation of the muzzle velocities and make your uh, rounds more consistent one round to the next to the next. I now make it a point to sort my cases, and the cases I'm using in this instance is Federal Champion Brass. Now that's a little bit softer brass, by the way, uh, and oftentimes I notice that this stuff dents up pretty easily during the ejection process. But I have quite a bit of Federal Champion Brass right on hand, ready to go, so that's the brass that I decided to use. And now when we're talking about primers, going back to our Primer Palooza video, the primer that I found is by far pretty clearly the best primer to use in these AR platform rifles or AR type rifles is the Federal Premium AR Match Rifle Primer. It's the small rifle uh, primer, obviously for the AR type rifles, in our case the 223, uh, and I'm going to be shooting my uh, rounds that I'm crafting today in the IWI Tavor. Now the IWI Tavor, by the way, is an 18 inch barrel with a 1 in 7 twist, so it's really kind of a good rifle for, uh, for reloading. You've got a nice twist right there and actually a fairly long barrel contrasted to uh, some of the other ARs that are coming out today, normally at about a 16, 16 and a half inch barrel. And the powder that I'm using is Ramshot Tack. Now, I have been using Varget for a very long time, and I use Varget in so many different calibers. It is a fantastic extreme powder. It's a temperature compensated powder and it is has so many broad applications it works so consistently I really do like uh, and give a full thumbs up to Varget but the problem with Varget for me is that it does not meter well at all through my electronic powder scales in fact I'm oftentimes making those little adjustments by hand taking out a kernel or two or three whatever because it overcharged or undercharged or adding a little bit in whatever. Um, and that's kind of, that's kind of annoying uh, that it doesn't work so well. 
So what I was thinking about doing is working up another load with a spherical powder that would meter better in my electronic uh, powder scale and dispenser as well as potential in a, in a uh, progressive press with a um, volumetric powder dispenser. And this stuff, TAC, Ramshot TAC, it pours like water. It's like this thing really meters beautifully through my, uh, through my scales. So I wanted to give this a try and so far, as far as handling it is concerned, TAC is a darn good powder. One of the things that I noticed though is that it really doesn't fill up the case very well. It's a fairly dense powder obviously and when I'm throwing these powder charges starting at 21.9 and going all the way to 24.1 grains, even at 24 grains, I'm just barely above half full of that case or on that case. So when you see that and when you have that finished round in your hand and you shake it and you can hear the powder clearly uh, shaking in that case, uh, understand that at the minimum charge and for sure never throw a charge below the minimum, especially in this instance, um, that you can actually have some erratic pressures because the powder charge is not you know filling up the case uh, very much so you might have at a very low charge you might see a little bit where that primer wants to back out or flatten um, I'm gonna run it if I see that I'm gonna run it to the next round um, and the next uh, sub subsequent load level and see how that goes. I'm going to watch this closely like I do for all of my load workups and as I said earlier we're running this from 21.9 through 24.1 grains of ramshot tack. And I'm going to be topping all this off with Barnes match burner 69 grain bullets. Now I've been shooting these bullets uh, in my IWI Tavor, AR-15, and uh, Mini-14, and they really perform well in all these rifles. Now, I'm pretty much shooting the IWI Tavor these days, and, uh, and that thing really digests these things very, very nicely. It's an excellent bullet, and uh, we'll see how this load likes it as well. So I've loaded 12 rounds and we're going to fire these in proper sequence and I'm going to be watching for the ladder test. I'm going to be being very careful to use the exact same point of aim and I'm going to be watching where these bullets are impacting or the point of impact. What we're looking for is two or three rounds that impact very very closely to one another and that's going to tell us that we have found a harmonic node. Then maybe we'll find more than one harmonic node, we'll see. Uh, then what we'll do is we'll come back at our next trip out to the range and we'll shoot for a group um, either one or two however many harmonic nodes we find during the ladder test that we're going to start in just a little bit. Now I'm ready to go so let's head out to the range and see how all this plays out. Hey we're out here at the shooting range today another nice day whenever you can get out at the range it's a good day. Well there's not much wind we're at about 89 degrees and uh, what we're going to be doing today is shooting the ladder test with this IWI Tavor 556 NATO and a target at 100 yards. Now the best laid plans of mice and men, right? Uh, the plan was that I would be shooting at 200 yards, but the 200 yard bay today uh, is filled and so I have slid down to the 100 uh, yard bay and that should work out just fine for this test. I'm hoping we have enough differentiation round to round as these bullets are climbing the ladder so that this information is useful to us. Simultaneously I am going to be trying to record each of these rounds firing 12 rounds 
I'm going to be recording each of these uh, with the lab radar chronograph. So we'll see how all this goes. Now recall that the ladder test is looking for harmonic nodes. In other words, two or more rounds that impact in roughly the same place while we have the same point of aim, even though each of these loads have a slightly different powder charge behind them. In reality or in practice, I rarely see a true ladder being formed. In other words, I rarely see where first round with the lowest powder charge impacts lowest on the target and then the next round is slightly higher and then slightly higher again and so on and so forth. Now that's not anything really wrong with the ladder test because we have to also understand barrel harmonics. The oscillations, the vibration, the resonance of that barrel is causing one round to fly a little bit high, a little bit low, a little bit left, a little bit right. But that point where we see two rounds impacting in pretty much the same place, given the same point of aim, that's real promising and that's a harmonic node that was discovered through the ladder test process. Now we're also going to be looking at velocities, but this really is not part of the ladder test. Thanks for sticking around. Hey, let's break this down now. Looking at the shot order, you know, you probably picked this up right away. Right out of the gate, shots one and two formed a very nice little harmonic node right there. You know, when I first saw that, I was like, well, you know, maybe I really should have been at 200 yards because what if all of my shots end up piling up together? But that was certainly not the case as round three and round four started dispersing to the left and to the right and so on and so forth. Now, we also had a nice harmonic node formed at rounds six and seven. And what's interesting to me is that that harmonic node, the place where they really started to group again, is really close to one another. Rounds one and two were just below rounds six and seven. And then, of course, it dispersed once again. Uh, and we have a weak harmonic node that reappeared uh, at the very last two rounds that I was firing, rounds 11 and 12. So if we look at the velocities, we see a very predictable pattern of very strong R squared, meaning that the variability in muzzle velocity is highly correlated with that powder charge. Now another very interesting way to look at this is to measure the dispersion or the spread between each pair of rounds. So for instance, I measured the distance between rounds 1 and 2, 2 and 3, 3 and 4, 4 and 5, and so on and so forth. And that is the graph that we're looking at right here. And this clearly shows us a strong harmonic node at rounds 1 and 2, again at 6 and 7, and then that slightly weaker harmonic node at rounds 11 and 12. Now we're going to be going back out to the range in our next episode of Extreme Reloading, and we're going to be shooting a five-round group of the exact same powder charge. In other words, I will be doing 22.0 grains of tack. That is right there in the middle of charges one and two, our first harmonic node. I'll also be throwing a harmonic node load at 23.0 grains. That represents rounds six and seven. And I'll do another harmonic node at 24.0 grains. That is the harmonic node, weak harmonic node at rounds 11 and 12. Now I also noticed a um, pretty strong sill formed, which is a velocity node or optimal charge weight type of node. And that appeared at a powder charge of 23.8 grains of tack powder. So I'm going to be loading five rounds of that as well. 
And to make this interesting, I'm also going to be loading five rounds with Varget. That's 24.3 grains of Varget, which happens to be the load that I'm currently using and have been using for a couple of years in this same rifle. They're all going to be pushing 69 grain Barnes match burners. And we'll compare these different groups for precision and accuracy and also the consistency of, of these groups using the lab radar chronograph. Now one thing that I always think about related to the ladder test uh, is the fact that the ladder test inherently includes shooter error. I, I know we, we put that rifle on a rest but still there's plenty of room for a person to yank the trigger uh, move that rest just a slight little bit to throw around to the left and to the right. And I try to be very cognizant of that as I'm firing those rounds to be sure that I'm introducing as little shooter error into those groups or into the ladder test itself uh, to introduce as little of my error as possible. Can I guarantee that 100% of shooter error is removed? No, that would kind of be silly to even think that a person can do that. But that really is an advantage of looking at velocity nodes or the optimal charge weight method. Uh, a person really doesn't have to be involved at all other than just squeezing, squeezing that trigger to get the chronograph to record the muzzle velocity of those rounds. And there's really nothing I can do to affect the muzzle velocity of those rounds when I'm simply squeezing the trigger. And I'm not really saying that the optimal charge weight test or velocity node test is the better approach compared to harmonic nodes. I'm just saying that we need to be cognizant of that. We have to be aware of that sort of error as we're doing our tests. And really, uh, with either test, whatever load we settle on, we really need to shoot that load again and again and again to ensure that it really is performing as well as it did when we first ran that test. Ideally, you might want to uh, shoot that same group under different temperatures to see how that powder and the overall uh, load stands up to varying temperatures. You might want to change the bullet seating depth a little bit to see how sensitive that load is to bullet seating depth, maybe change the neck tension, those sorts of things. Well, we've got lots to do in our next episode. We'll be going back out to the range and shooting for group. So I hope you'll be tuning back in to our next episode of Extreme Reloading.